We just wrapped up a diet, don't really like that word, but we did a diet challenge that helped people lose 10 to 15 pounds in five weeks and they felt amazing. We're gonna share with you guys today in this video the five most effective things that they did that worked for them. First thing, food quality. We provided an approved foods list and essentially what was on that list were whole minimally processed foods. You guys hear a lot about this, but in our society today, a lot of our foods are processed. What does that mean? That means that they've been modified, they have a longer shelf life, they have ingredients that probably aren't sitting well with our body, they have things such as high fructose corn syrup, and the list goes on. Those processed foods are typically found in the center of the grocery store. That's because they have a longer shelf life. We told everyone to stick to five ingredients or less. Think about, does it have a mother? Does it come from the ground? Can you pronounce all of the ingredients? If you flip over the label and the label is literally an entire page of all of these words that you can't pronounce, put that item back on the shelf and keep going on until you find something that has five ingredients or less and you can pronounce all of those ingredients. By cleaning up your diet and focusing on whole minimally processed foods, you're gonna decrease inflammation in your body and you're gonna avoid a lot of unwanted necessary calories that come from those highly processed foods. And on top of it, those highly processed foods are super calorically dense, but they don't satiate you and satisfy you. So you find that you're hungry an hour later. And what they do is they signal cravings from your brain which make you crave more of those highly processed sugary foods, and then it becomes a vicious cycle. And speaking of that vicious cycle, that's tend to what happened with cravings. Most people were starting this after the holidays, their cravings were at the highest. It took about one to two weeks for most people to kick those cravings, and once they got through that one to two weeks, they kind of just started to dissipate and go away, where they found themselves not wanting to reach for the ice cream in the evening or wanting to reach for that chocolate. And it's okay to have it in moderation, but what we want to avoid is feeling like those cravings control us. The second thing we worked on together was quantity of food that they were eating and eating throughout the day. So whether that's counting your macros, which by all means you do not have to do, but if you want to, you can, or maybe that's using your hand methods. So using the palm to determine how much protein you should be having at meals, a cup to determine your carbs, a fist to determine your veggies, and your thumb to determine those fats. Or if you don't like doing that, then you could use the plate method where we divide our plate into sections and we know how to build that plate into protein, veggies, fats, carbs per meal. Not only does protein give us that lean toned muscle look and help us with our recovery, but it also helps keep us satiated. Our body also requires more energy to digest protein. So it's gonna keep us more satiated and we're also gonna burn more calories when we have to digest the protein that we're eating and then on top of it, it's gonna build more lean mass and muscle burns more calories than fat. So our resting metabolic rate is gonna go up. Including more protein in your diet is just a win, 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 and it's gonna make you feel better all around. So when we look at the food quantity, it's important to build your plate around protein to make sure you're getting adequate sources of protein at each meal. How much protein should you eat per meal? Your goal should be to eat 0.8 grams up to 1.2 grams per pound of your body weight. Sitting at that 1.0 gram per pound, so if I weigh 135 pounds, I'm aiming for 135 pounds of, 100, not 135 pounds, 135 grams of protein per day is gonna help me to recover and also help my body have enough protein to be able to go into muscle protein synthesis so that I can repair and build lean tissue. From there, once you put your protein onto your plate, then we wanna look at filling our plate with fibrous foods or healthy carbohydrates. So when I say healthy, I mean sweet potatoes, golden potatoes, oats, bananas, fruit. Fruit classifies as a carbohydrate and putting our starchier carbohydrates around our workout. So maybe in that pre-workout and post-workout meal. And then from there, tapering off into healthier fats such as avocado and good healthy vegetables. So when we look at food quantity and we wanna use the plate method, we could break down our plate into saying, okay, I want at least 25% of my plate to be protein. From there, about 15% of my plate to be fats. And then the other remaining 55 to 60% to be colorful veggies. Those veggies will be classified as your carbohydrate, and we can swap out that 55 to 65% of veggies for a starchier carbohydrate pre or post workout to have more readily available sources of fuel. That way we feel energized during our workouts. Today's video is sponsored by Bear Mattress, a premium mattress designed to upgrade your sleep, improve your lifestyle, and your overall quality of life. Bear created their mattresses with premium quality materials sourced from small family owned partners here within the USA. All their mattresses have sleep recovery technology, which was created to improve sleep quality and ensure optimal performance throughout your day. 
With Bear, you get hibernation, quality of sleep throughout every season of your life. Everyone has different preferences and sleep positions. To help find the mattress that is suitable for you, Bear has made a sleep quiz that will remove all the guesswork. Personally, I'm a back sleeper who prefers a medium firm mattress. The Bear mattress comes rolled up in a box, is super easy to set up, and is delivered right to your door set with free shipping in the US. There's also a 120 night sleep trial to test out the mass mattress so you can ensure that you love it, along with a lifetime warranty that comes with your mattress. Click the link below and use code Christy Ermo O'Connell to get 30% off your premium mattress. Now back to our video. Our third thing is gonna be movement. And that's movement the other 23 hours of the gym. Often we talk to people that they're like, hey, I came to the gym for 60 minutes. And I'm like, well, what did you do the other 23 hours of the day? And they're like, I sat in my seat and I didn't even go maybe 500 steps. What you have to realize is we can burn up to 50% of our calories throughout the days through something called non-exercise activity thermogenesis. That's gonna be things such as fidgeting, such as cleaning the house, just moving all around. Your body burns calories doing those things. So if we're used to sitting all day, we need to schedule in time every hour or so to get up and get a couple steps in, park a little bit further. It's really great if you can get a step counter because it's gonna hold you accountable and it's gonna be very obvious how much you've moved outside of your workout for the day. The goal that we had everyone in the challenge aiming for was 10,000 steps. And I think a lot of people were surprised at how hard that was for them to achieve. And if you would have asked them before this challenge if they were gonna be able to achieve 10,000 steps with no problem, most of them would have said yes. So getting a step counter and just paying attention, setting breaks throughout the day that you have to stand up and you have to get some steps in and move around is gonna be really beneficial and help you burn a few excess calories. Our fourth thing is gonna be drinking water. We suggested for everyone to drink half their body weight of ounces in water. For some people, that started off to be a lot, but then as they got more comfortable with it, they were able to do it. At a minimum, we'd love to see you drinking 80 ounces of water a day. Our body needs water. On top of that, if you can add in maybe a little bit of electrolytes, so some sodium, just to make sure that we're balancing those electrolytes, it's gonna make you feel better. It's gonna help, help your thoughts feel more clear. It's gonna help you feel more focused throughout the day. And it's even gonna help your workouts go better. Sometimes when we go to reach for a soda or we reach for juice, we don't realize how many calories we're actually drinking and how much added sugar comes in there. If we're drinking 40 grams of sugar with our orange juice in the morning, we're not setting ourselves up to feel better later in the day because a lot of times we'll experience that crash that comes after we have the juice. Other times we're reaching for snacks when we're actually just thirsty. So start by trying to drink half your body weight in ounces and see how that makes you feel. You'll be amazed at how water can actually help fill you up so you don't find yourself mindlessly eating. Our fifth thing is sleep. A lot of times when people start sleeping more, the fat starts to melt off. And that's because it helps with our cortisol levels and it helps with our hormone balance. Sleep is underratedly one of the most important factors when it comes to weight loss and performance in the gym. You have to try to sleep seven plus hours a night. And when I say sleep, I don't mean get in bed and watch Netflix seven hours before you have to get up. I mean, lights out, sleep mask on, noise canceling headphones, dark, cool room, winding down to give your body time to wind down so that you can get a great night's sleep. Sleep is not only gonna help us feel better, but it's also gonna help us with our mental clarity. It's gonna help us feel more motivated to go to the gym because we feel good. It's gonna help us when we need to focus on our work throughout the day. And it's gonna help with our cravings. A lot of studies show that if you are sleep deprived, you tend to reach for those sugarier, higher calorically, higher fat dense foods because it gives you that instant dopamine hit or it makes you feel good. It's, it's when you have a full burst of carbs and all of a sudden you're like, wow, I feel really good. But then an hour later, that wears off. A lot of times if we can get enough sleep, we can keep our cravings at bay and we can feel really great throughout the day. These five things are super important to helping you feel and look your best and also get the most out of your workouts. Speaking of workouts, we wanna make sure that we're getting our workouts in weekly. So three to four times a week, incorporating some sort of strength training or some sort of resistance training to help build lean muscle and build lean tissue is gonna also help our body burn more calories. Muscle burns more calories than fat does. So building the muscle is gonna be crucial for our metabolism. And the last tip I wanna leave you with is never try to have two negatives or two bads. I don't really wanna use that word, but 
two times in a row that maybe you go out and you just let go and you eat whatever you want. That's great, have some balance, but then your next meal needs to get you back on track. Because if we go out, we eat whatever we want, we have a couple drinks, and then we wake up the next morning and we do it again, now we've done it twice in a row, which opens the door to do it again a third time. And then from there, that can snowball and that becomes harder to get back on track. If we only do it once in moderation, have some balance, we get right back on track our next meal, that puts us back into a good mindset to get back into our healthy lifestyle. That's very good when it comes to our habits. Same with our workouts. Once we skip one, it's like, okay, I was tired, I needed a rest day, I missed one workout, okay, fine. Something came up. If we miss a second one, all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, I already missed two. Then maybe we miss a third, and then again, it begins to snowball. So just keeping yourself in a routine, in a rhythm, where we try to, if we have moderation, or we have balance, that we leave it to one, and we never try to do that back to back. Because if we do it back to back, it's gonna be easier to snowball and to start going down the wrong path. If you want us to start diving more into how you can optimize your diet and your nutrition on this channel, let us know in the comments below as we would love to bring that information for you all. Have a great day, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next video.